So I'm back here at the Santos <coughs> trailhead and uh, I thought it'd be fun to, to walk some of the bike trail so that, uh, well, I want to see, I've been down it before, but I just, I can't wait to get my mountain bike back here and uh, actually ride these trails. And, uh, you know, before I took a right up here, so I'm going to take a left and uh, I thought uh, we might come out and I'll tell a couple of military stories. Uh, you know, they say they're documenting all that now with the VA and whatnot, and I tried to do it, and uh, it just got crazy. They could get in there, and the equipment wasn't working, and, oh, well, let's do it over this, that, and the other, and you got to install 16 apps on your computer because they want to do it virtually, and you're just like, you know what, screw that. I'll tell my own doggone stories and just throw them up on YouTube, and uh, let's uh, wait here just a minute. And uh, we'll see when we get a different look. I'll tell my first story. So back during the virus, I used to come back here. They had everything roped off. And, of course, I just stepped over the ropes and came back in here. Because I wanted to see what these bike trails looked like. And uh, with the um, trails closed, I knew that I could walk these and not have to end this cool. I got these little obstacles. You know, you could even I could handle this trail, uh, you know, being the fat and out of shape that I am. Now I am sorry to see the blue marker here that means it might be getting a little bit more difficult but uh, well, I just I do not enter. Okay so let's get to the the first story. I guess we got to go all the way back to boot camp. You know back then I was a pudgy fat guy <laughs> and somehow I thought I was gonna make it through Marine Corps basic training and uh, you know for a lot of the guys you know, that is a mental and physical battle from the day you get to Paris Island to the day you leave. And uh, I was, I did fine with the mental part, um, but the physical part was what destroyed me. You know, every time you, you start getting in better shape, then uh, they up the ante, you know. <laughs> you started at a half a mile, and then you're at a mile, and then you're at two miles, and you're at three miles. And, you know, holy moly. And uh, so every time I thought I was getting there, and there number of stories about that uh you know one one time i was running and uh you know the guys you know sometimes you look out for each other but unfortunately what happened to me was we started i was in third battalion i company and uh we started 72 guys and uh man out of the 72 only 32 of us graduated and we of course we picked up some recycles along the way recycles when they uh they bring you in so i'm just looking so it's, now where I went before was, uh, well, I don't know, is this just like a loop? Check this out. And uh, so every time you had a bunk bunk mate and you got to look out for each other. Now, I've never been on this. This is this is new. I, I took the left over there. Another thing to walk over. That was fun. And uh, so, you know, you make a friend. I remember Casto, Castano. He, he was a great guy out of New York. And uh, he got recycled and, you know, and then occasionally you end up with a bunk mate that's a real prick, you know, and so it's just, uh, and then I, sometimes, you know, you had to fight for the bottom. I mean, I really needed to be on the bottom bunk because what they do is they come in there and uh, you'd sleep on a really narrow bunk bed and uh, they bang on them cans and just scream and holler. And that's a rude awakening <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, if you don't get up to the line, quick enough you know they, they come over and they just berate you and holler at you and make you do exercise right there in front of them and uh, so you, it's real important to get out of that bunk bed and getting off of that top bunk was was hard man and uh, I remember uh, more than once I rolled right off of that top bunk and boom hit the concrete <laughs> it was, luckily I never broke anything which is amazing or you know hit my head if I landed on my head of course it probably would have killed me but uh and then, you know, they, they love to, to make you go out and what they do for, to torture you is, we, you know, we would go out and they put, put us in these sand pits with the sand fleas. And they, you know, of course you're all hot and sweaty. It's Paris Island, South Carolina, for goodness sake. And so that sand would just stick all over your body, you know, and, uh, and then they, uh, they would just march you in. Of course, and of course they made you stand at attention in there too. Let the, let the sand fleas bite on you for a while. You know, that is just... 
Oh my God. And if you, if you kill a sand flea, I don't know if you ever saw the movies, <laughs> you're in big trouble. You're going to be digging for a long time. Uh, digging in more ways than one. Digging, we, digging's when you get down on your fours and your know, legs go back and forth, but also digging a hole to bury that sand flea in. <clears throat> so anyway, so then you get in there and, uh, you know, tell you to go to sleep, get in the bunks. And you got that sand stuck all over you, so you sleep in between the sheets with the sand all over you, just hot and sweaty and miserable, and there's no air conditioning, at least the third battalion, there's no air conditioning in those bays. So even at night, you're, you're sweating. And uh, it was just, whew, that, that's enough for now. I'll think of some other stories. Uh, I guess my favorite one was, uh, was Jenkins. He was this uh, big, big black guy, and... Uh, he, uh, you know, you would never want to meet him in a dark alley. I'll tell you what, that guy was, well, all the drill instructors are buff. I mean, none of those guys, I, to be a drill instructor is just incredible in the Marine Corps. I mean, those guys are, they're, they're not human. You know, I, I would say that the, you know, you, you hear about the Rangers and the, and the SEALs. I, I, I swear, I, I, I have more fear of a Marine Corps drill instructor than I would of a Navy SEAL or a, an army ranger that's just me I, the only ones that rival them was the arm i'm the marine corps recon those guys are unbelievable too but uh so anyway when he he would get up and his his mouth would get like this far from me and uh it was weird because he was his, he kind of a dark dark you know dark complexion and so his mouth would had it looked all red like a <laughs> I don't know, like a like a crocodile or something, man. He would just get right up next to your nose and just be screaming at you, and his mouth would open like really wide. It was just crazy, and I would always look at that and go like, "My God, this is crazy." But uh, we'll get some more stories here in a minute. Uh, let's uh, let's chill and wait till we get something to look at. I did want to show you. See, this is kind of the stuff they got in here. You can go this way and go go over this ramp right here. But if it was me riding. Because this is about me seeing the bike trail to just make sure that I'm sure I'd bike so far. I'd, I'd be just fine on a mountain bike back here. But let's uh, let's get a video here in a minute. So we're kind of at a crossroads here. And I was going to stick to the green trail. Uh, but I think it's going to look basically the same as what you've been seeing. So here we come into a blue trail. This is slightly more difficult. Uh, you know, the two are crossing. These, this whole area is just riddled with uh, trails, bike trails, horse trails. Um, uh, just it's a treasure it's a real treasure that they were able to preserve this uh, but uh, getting back to the stories I guess I talk about the physical hardships which is part of the mental uh, game that you play and uh, I you know just a couple of quick stories was uh, one time I was I was running and you know in your in your brain you say I'm not gonna quit I'm not gonna quit I'm not gonna quit well Sometimes, sometimes your body quits for you, whether you mentally willed it or not. And uh, in this one particular day, my legs, they just, they just gave out. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I was going down, you know, I was going to hit, hit hard on the ground. And uh, two guys stepped up. I wish I could knew their names. I mean, I can't remember at the time, of course, I knew their names. That they stepped up and they grabbed me on either side, you know, unbeknownst to the drill instructor. And they carried me. And, but we were we were like right near the end of the run, and uh, so we got to to where everybody was you know uh, just about done, and uh, you know, and they were they were caught, hollering at me, hey, you got your knees, little man, you got your knees, little man, come on, man, you got your knees, you got your knees, little man, <laughs> and and I did, I was able to get back to the uh, the squad bay because you know you go in and you get your shower, sometimes sometimes you don't even get to shower, but uh, so that was you know that was first uh, physical story the. The other one was uh, you do a, um, well, you go out, uh, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, you go out and you camp more or less with the inferior equipment and uh, do war exercises and uh, it's a big hike out there. And, uh, and then what they do is you have a 10 mile, it might have been even longer, forced march back. And uh, that was just, that's probably the most brutal thing that I can remember and uh it was just bizarre because you're you know i'm in the back you know being the short guy you're always in the back of the of the march and uh and you'd hear them hollering body coming body coming body coming and uh and then there'd be somebody who had just fallen out and you just step over top of them and keep going and then they had two 
uh, you know, the ambulances following behind us and they just pick them guys up and throw, <laughs> throw them in, you know, and then, and then once they had their fill, you know, the, that vehicle would take off and another vehicle would come in behind us. And, uh, so I, I was really proud. I actually made it all the way back to the, uh, the squad bay and, uh, so we were in there and of course I'm shaking all over, you know, just from exhaustion. And uh, man, I wouldn't tell you, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many people, see this is different, look at that, that's pretty cool. How many guys fell out on that forest march is, I, I bet it was a hundred at least. But uh, anyway, the, uh, so I, I went to make, you know, they said, you know, fall out because we were gonna go outside the squat bay and fall in for, for to go to the chow hall. And I went to, I went to make a step and once again, my body just didn't even react. <laughs> I went right down and hit that concrete full force, man. Bam! I was like, oh. and then once again, the guys snatched me up. Come on, little man, get your legs together, get your legs together. Carried me outside. <laughs> you know, I think that was pretty cool. And uh, so, but the, just kind of the, the physical demands. Yeah, another story was the uh, drill instructors. You know, we, we had to climb these ropes and, uh, you know, if you've never done, I mean, once you get into shape, I mean, you can do it pretty good. But, uh, you know, they, so the drill instructors, the guys that couldn't make it up the ropes, you know, they make fun of them and beat, bitch at them, you know, get you, get up that rope, get up that rope, you know. And uh, so uh, luckily I could, I could climb it okay. But uh, this one particular day, a guy said, I just can't do it, Charge. I just can't do it. And he, the senior drill instructor, he was this old guy too, man. I bet, I'll bet he was my age. I mean, I, at least he looked it. I mean, I'm, maybe not, but I mean, he was nothing but muscle. And and uh, and he grabbed one rope in one hand and grabbed another rope in the other hand and scaled up. If you can imagine the arms, you know, shot out to the left and shot out to the right and just wheeled his way right up those ropes. I, I was just looking at that and I said, my goodness I, I i can't imagine anybody being able to do something like that but that's that's the things that they could do i mean you know when we were run the drill instructor would run around the platoon so you know if we ran let's say five miles they might run 15 you know so that's how that's how great shape those guys are in and uh, of course they're screaming at you the whole way another quick funny story was uh, that got me in trouble was you know everything down here is yes sir yes sir yes sir you know or yes sir and uh so we would be out and uh you know you'd be sometimes we would see the women marines because they're they're on the same island and all of a sudden you'd hear them say yes ma'am <laughs> in that high-pitched voice you know and i just i don't know why it busted me up but i would just start laughing and the drill instructor knew i was gonna laugh because after the first couple of times you know, he he just began, he wouldn't even he wouldn't even look. Ellis, start digging. You know, and I I'd have to drop out of formation and just sit there and dig for about 15, 20 minutes. And believe me, you, that is brutal. And uh, I kept trying not to laugh, but I guess maybe I don't I don't know what was wrong with me. But uh, that was just another quick story at Paris Island. So I'll uh, try to think of a few. There's so many. You know, you can I mean I remember my my uh, PMI. That's your primary marksmanship instructor. He was going to give me a chew of tobacco if I shot expert. And I was one shot away from shooting expert, which really stifled my career. You know, if you shoot expert, you're, you're worshipped in the Marine Corps. And uh, if I, I, mean, I wanted that chew of tobacco back then, I used to chew tobacco all the time. You know, and when you get in the, on the Marine base, you know, you can't, you don't, you're not allowed to smoke cigarettes, which is kind of where the movies go wrong. And you're not allowed to, you know, you don't chew tobacco. You don't even see that stuff. Uh, although they did somehow, the house mouse, he got his hands, other house mice, I guess both of them, they got their hands on some cigarettes. And they, man, they, when they, somehow the drill instructors found out and they abused them guys. I actually had a tear in my eyes rolling down, feeling for those guys because I'd never seen somebody abuse somebody so, so much. I mean, they were literally crying, the guys, after the drill instructors were done with them. And at that time, I was the gear locker recruit. And uh, which was not a bad job. It, the problem was is you only get like an hour of free time to write your folks and read your mail. And when you're a gear locker recruit, you know, that bit into my free time. So I wasn't able to a lot of times write letters. And believe me, a letter in, at boot camp, if you ever know anybody that goes, 
you know, write them every day. I mean, that's that's the only thing you live for is is to get some correspondence and then send a letter back. But uh, so what happened was because I'm small and short, Ellis, you're now the house mouse. And I was like, oh my God, no, no, you don't want to be the house mouse. I mean, that means you clean up the drill instructor's area. They got a separate room right there in the. See, they sleep right with you in the squad bay, and uh, and I, not all three of them. And you know, they take turns. And uh, so, man, he, that's, that's when my life, and that was third phase. I was in the, I was in the final phase. I was ready to get out. You know, my life turned into a living hell. And uh, I remember one time I missed a pair of underwear on the floor. I, I don't know why I didn't see it. And uh, he calls me into the house, you know, and he says, Ellis, what's wrong with this picture? I, I don't know, Sergeant. Well, look around. So I looked, you know, I still, I said, still don't know, sir. And so he grabbed my head and he just slammed it into the locker. And he says, now do you see it? And it was, I could look down then and see the, the underwear on the foot. Yes, sir, the recruit sees it now, sir. Oh my God. So, but that's, that's the life of the house mouse. You, <laughs> man, I, and they always take the small, short guys. I don't, I don't know what it is about they want to abuse from them. Although they pick on the big guys too, don't get me wrong. There was there was a couple of big guys that thought they you know, they were full of themselves, and uh, they recycled those guys just out of spite. You know, I luckily I, I didn't get recycled. In fact, I got meritorious promotion to PFC. I guess they just admired the fact that I pushed through. You know, when they knew physically I wasn't. You know, the odds were against me to make it. So, um, but uh, anyway, I'll. Uh, that's probably it for the the boot camp stories that I can think of. I mean, those are the ones that really stand out in my mind, other than the fact that you know, I always thought, man, I don't want to go to war. Because see, back then we had the old M16s. And, uh, you know, in Vietnam, they had a lot of problems with those weapons. And uh, so we were doing these fake exercises and I would pop up to get off a couple of rounds, you know, because you're playing war games and the thing would jam. And you have your, your jam procedure uh, you know, hit it, hit it, uh, smack it. You know, I can't remember. There was a four-step procedure or something like that. And and, uh, and and it never worked. And so it would stay jammed. And I thought, man, if I was in a real battle, you know, you'd be in a crapless sword if you got your rifle with you. If it don't work, you know, that's those things were such garbage. I think that they fixed a lot of those problems with the A2, uh, which I fired later on. I don't remember it jamming. Uh, that was much later in my military career. But... Uh, yeah, that's probably it for this video. I bet I've talked for a good 20, 30 minutes, but you can kind of see even the blue trail would be doable here if you wanted, to, you know, to ride it and you're not, I mean, it does look at it. It's winding around a lot more than the uh, the green trail, but, uh, you know, you're not hitting a lot of rocks or uh, roots. You know, that's kind of the things that when you're not a real good, I mean, I used to be a great mountain bike rider, but when you're not real good like I'm not now, you know, those are the things that when you hit them, you're going to go right over. Uh, especially because I'd be riding my old bike. I wouldn't bring my new bike back in here. Uh, I just use the new bike for uh, the asphalt trails for the most part. But yeah, you can see it's it's pretty windy. you got some roots right there. But uh, so this is kind of a look at the um, the Santos bike trails, which is a different, different feel. I mean, than just hiking the... Uh, the um the florida trail uh speaking of florida trail haven't gotten back to it yet i'm i'm looking forward to the weather you know you can't ride that motorcycle you know for an hour which is about how far i'm getting out to to get on the florida trail to do the sections that i need to do to keep going you know um so because it's just too darn cold i never thought you know in a million years I'm, luckily my my sister-in-law she when we first moved here she said don't throw away your winter gear because it, it, we do have winter here in Florida. Now, it's nothing like your experience and probably any, any other place in the country. But uh, it get, it's getting down in the 30s sometimes at night. And then during the day, you know, high of uh, 55 sometimes, which is cold, you know, riding. I'm, I'm, I'm a wimp, I admit it. So, um, all right. You guys have a good one. We'll get this video up. This will be an easy one. Only three clips and... Uh, but, you know, I just kind of wanted to tell some, some military stories because, you know, every time I work with the VA or... Or any of those, those idiots, you know, they, 
well, you know, we, the equipment's not working. You know, and that took a big chunk. I mean, I gave up days of my life trying to get those videos ready. You know, took notes, wrote down, you know, things I wanted to talk about in the videos. And then you get there and, oh, you know, you need to zoom us. You know, whatever it was back then, I don't remember. So, screw that. I'll just tell my own story. All right. You guys have a blessed uh, day. I know I am. This is a nice, fun hike. And uh, I'm going to go further. Once again, you know, once you get out on these trails, I just wanted to hike about a mile a day. I, I'm not feeling, you know, up to snuff. But, uh, you know, once you get out here, you're just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go all the way to the end of this thing and then cut over to the uh, the paved trails over this way. And I'll just walk the paved trail going back. But I'm glad that I got to see see this. I'll, hopefully I'll cross back over the green trail and, and hike that. But I just wanted to show you what the blue trail would look like. Because, uh, you know, hopefully somebody that is a good mountain bike rider will get to watch these videos. Have a good one. Thought I'd record one more just in case uh, I'm half eaten. There was a huge crash right up this way. I thought it was a big, big animal. And uh, I haven't heard anything since then. It could have been a limb falling out of a tree. Probably the more likely scenario. But... Uh, yeah, I did think of one, one more story was, you know, I did tell you I was meritoriously promoted at the end. And uh, so what they have, and, and I don't know if they still do it or not, it's called the pinning of the stripes. And uh, the three drill instructors, and I don't know if it was any others that they would got to do it. But what you do is, you know, you, you line up and then the uh, you march forward and then they take the, they hit you as hard as they can, uh, you know, where your stripe is. Yeah, I mean, you know, the first the first blow, my arms went numb. I couldn't even feel my fingers. And then, you know, now you're hurt and you bruised you badly, you know. And then the second, I mean, because those guys are badass and they're taking a full swing and a punch. And uh, so then the second drill instructor hits you to pin that stripe on. And then the third drill instructor hits you to pin that stripe on. And uh, all I can remember is I wanted to cry. I, I think there might have been a tear in my eye. <laughs> but you, good morning, if you've cried, you'd, you'd probably get hit a couple more times. But uh, so I, I couldn't even move my arms for, for, oh, I don't know, a couple hours after that. I mean, I just, I thought maybe they paralyzed my arms. But uh, that's just, uh, just some of the hazing that you, you go through. Probably this day with all the snowflakes, they, they're not allowed to do that anymore. The, uh, the other thing that was kind of funny was even back then, the drill instructors couldn't say, you know, the F-bomb or the, you know, S-H word or any of that stuff. So what they did, and it was pretty, it was pretty funny, actually, and, uh, and ingenious at the same time, was they developed their own cuss language. And uh, so they never said the, the, the main words, but you knew exactly what they were implying every time they said you know you get your scuzzy little bodies over here you slimy recruities you know and just a oh my goodness and they did it so well i mean it was you knew they were cussing at you when they were cussing at you that was the thing i just thought that was pretty innovative to come up with your own cussing language and uh, it's probably still the same you know who knows i wish i could remember some of the cadences oh there it was Whew. That was a squirrel. <laughs> that just scared me. After that big crash up there in the woods, I'm like, there's anything I hear is rustling around down here. Gets me, gets me, gets my heart rate up, which is good. But uh, okay, I, I I can't think of anything else. And you know, the next I just did want did want to finish up with this. The next time I go out just to talk uh, stories about the military was uh, I'll talk about my time at uh, Camp Lejeune. Now that's probably going to have to be two videos because. What happened was at that time I had been promoted again, and uh, so when I got to Camp Lejeune, I outranked everybody in the platoon, and uh, so they made me platoon sergeant. And uh, oh my God, you never want. I mean, I had a. It was just like the movie Stripes. I swear to goodness, it was just like Stripes. So many stories came out of that, and as the platoon sergeant, you know, I was always responsible for everything. And uh, boy, I tell you, the only thing that saved me, and uh, was I had, at uh, that time I had my car, well, I was one of the few ones, and uh, and then I had my golf clubs. And so what I would do every day is, uh, you know, after the, well, to get away from the chaos, you know, I would always just go over to the golf course and play some golf, and then I'd come back to the next round of, you know, my God, Kirk, you're not going to believe what's happened while you were out playing golf, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was just one thing after another. 
So you know, here we go. This is, you know, you see the three trails crossing. Bike trail there, bike trail canopy. And then, you know, this is a nice touch, man. You come out here and, you know, you got a bench to sit on. So this one's called Speedway. And uh, I'll just continue on this way and uh, and hopefully that'll be it. I, I, if, I hear an, <laughs> if I hear another loud crash, I'm making another video. So I thought I'd show you this. You know, this is something you'd see on a blue trail that you wouldn't see more than likely on a green trail. And there was a bike part laying around here somewhere. So somebody, somebody took a spill here. And I, understandably so. I did want to tell a snowflake story though for all the, the young guys out there. Uh, the, uh, after that 10 mile hike, uh, my boots didn't quite fit properly. Um, and I had made do with them, you know, all the way up until that point. But your foot boots really got, and those boots that they issue in the military, they're not, you know, like Gander Mountain or, you know, they're, they're garbage. You know, I don't know how, why we outfit our troops with such, with, with such terrible equipment. But uh, anyway, so um, this huge blister was on the back of my heel and it had gotten infected and it hurt. I mean, it actually, you know, you had them streaks coming up. And of course, when the drill instructor saw it, I got berated for allowing that situation to, to go too long. And uh, they did send me to sick bay, and they they took care of it. And then they, you know, to their credit, I mean, the drill instructors, you think they're out to get you. They're just out to do their job. Um, so they they went and they took me, and you know, made sure I had a proper fitting pair of boots after that. And uh, you know, and then I did get out of uh, there was a five mile march, and man, I was I was kind of happy. I wasn't happy about the 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 infection, you know, in my heel, which, and that's what I was going to tell you. I did cry. I had hurt so bad that, that a couple of nights I was just sitting in my bunk, just tears rolling. I mean, I'm not sobbing like a, a fool, but I mean, tears are rolling out of my eyes in pain. And uh, so that's uh, that's the one time I cried at boot camp. There you go, you snowflakes. Enjoy that. All right, so you mountain bikers, you might be interested. That trail I was on, this is called Canopy. And I believe I've come out right here at the Vortex, which we've done a previous video on. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is coming right over into the Vortex. Um, let me verify that. Well, I was lying. That's, it's not, we're not coming out into the Vortex. This is a different area that I've never seen before. Uh, so it says dog bone going that way. And, uh, and then you got this dog bone going this way, so this is another green trail. And uh, I'll probably look at the map. I wish they would do a you are here on these maps, and they never do. It doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not sure where exactly I am. But there is a, a another trail I'll show you here in just a second that I'm going to hike down because I think it's going to take me back to the paved bike trail, but I could be wrong. So we'll see. You know, it's a... That's the thing I love about doing this type of hiking. You know, you just get lost, and uh, you know you don't know where you are. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. So I was on Southeast 25th Avenue because I did go back and look at that sign and figure out where I was, and then I saw this fence back here. Look at this, man! I swear, even in my best days of mountain biking, there's no way that I could ride something like that. I mean, that's just insane. And then it comes, you could come up this way, but look at this trail. This is the advanced trail. The reason why I came up here was because I'm kind of hiking down a road. I'm heading east. I hope that's the right damn direction in my head. I'm trying to think of, uh, that should be right. But you could come up, I mean, this is the advanced trail. I mean, look how, look how crazy you can get back here. And then that goes down that way. Man, I'd run right into this two trees right there, bro. Because you got them rocks that are going to bounce you around. And the reason I came up was I saw this fence, and I said, why in the hell is there a fence here? You know, I guess they didn't want people cutting over this way for whatever reason. I, I don't know, maybe erosion. But, uh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, good thing there's a fence there. All right. So, anyway, this is kind of where I'm hiking is down this little road over here. Real nice, easy hike. But you know, you, you come down and you get out here, and uh, your curiosity hits you. Look at this. Now, I don't, I don't see anything marking this, but it looks like a trail. Wouldn't it be fun to come back and hike that and just see where it went? All right. 